What is up guys? Loco Coco back again and today I am here to show you how to make a green screen lit as poorly as this look as clean as this. Now any of my current subscribers this may seem a bit out of form for my channel. This is just something that's going to happen every so often. I do like to share my knowledge and teach people things that I know, so I'm just going to do that across the course of my channel here and there. So if you're new and you're willing to wait for little bits of knowledge, make sure you subscribe. If you like any of my other content, check it out. Make sure you subscribe if you like it. But anyway, let's just jump into Premiere and we'll show you exactly how to fix your poorly lit green screen and still have it be clean and usable. So now that we've jumped into Premiere, the first thing you want to do, obviously after you've got all your footage synchronized, put together, so on and so forth, you want to head over into the Lumetri color panel. Now this panel, if you do not have it, it can be found in the window screen up here. It's all in alphabetical order. You head down to Lumetri color, tick that box, and you'll have a Lumetri color panel that you can move around and put wherever you want. But this is what the color panel looks like. And before you do, before you use the tool that I'm going to teach you to use, the first thing you want to do is you want to add any color corrections that you need to do to your video first. If you don't do this first, it's going to cause you problems later when you apply the effect that I'm going to show you and then you do the color correction, it messes everything up. Do the color correction first. All right, so that was a very rough color correction there, but you've done the color correction. So now you can move on to this tool here, this one right here, the HSL secondary. Now this is going to be a godsend for you if you have poor lighting on your green screen. I use it no matter what. I use it whether I have good lighting, bad lighting, or in between. It is an amazing tool to use for green screens. Now, the first thing you wanna do once you've opened up this, you click on it, open up the panel, and you want to go straight to your eyedropper tool. So this one here, you've got the standard eyedropper, the plus eyedropper, and the minus eyedropper. I'm going to show you what each one of those does. This eyedropper sets the, sets the standard, I guess. So it picks the color that you want. And then once you've picked your color, you can then drag this meter up, and it's going to increase that color. It's going to sort of matted out if per se and then you can make it a nice bright green the brighter the green the better it'll be so then once you've got your color picked your color turned up you can then go ahead turn the temperature down to blue king out likes a cooler temperature over a warmer temperature so you want to turn that temperature all the way down to blue then turn the tint all the way to green, obviously, and turn the contrast all the way up and the saturation all the way up. And you have one hell of a green there. But, as you can see, it hasn't got the whole green screen because it's poorly lit. Now, this is exactly what it would look like if you were going to try and key it out. You'd have like blemishes over here and dark bits over here and it wouldn't key out properly. So this is where the plus eyedropper comes in. So you, once you click on this plus eyedropper, you'll have another eyedropper to just drop wherever you want and you drop it on those colors that haven't been keyed out. And look at that. It's pretty much the same green as the other one. You drop it on all of those spots that you were having trouble with. My cable for my headset has disappeared into nothing, but that's what you, that's what you get. If you see any noise around the edges, feel free to zoom all the way in so you can get that eyedropper precisely on those bits of noise on the edges because you will often have them even with good lighting. Okay, so now you've got a lovely greened out green screen. Hold on, I have one little spot here. It's all lovely and greened out. There is slight changes in color that you can barely notice unless you're really looking for them. You can see the warmth in that top right hand corner and you can see the difference between the two sides. That will come up in the keying tool, but it won't be a problem to fix. With doing this, 
Any spill that you have that looks roughly the same color as any of the colors that you've selected on the green screen, it's going to turn that green too. So that has turned green as well. And what we want to do is we just grab our minus eyedropper. So that's where this comes in. We get rid of that color. It's still a little bit on there. We get rid of that. Okay, so now that we've got rid of that green on the headset, we haven't got any problems anywhere else, which is not what I was looking for. I was looking for problems. I wanted problems. But so we can just skim, skim on through our footage and notice a bit of a problem here. So it's always good to just skim through your footage, find those little bits of noise and problems and just try and green them out. There we go, there's a bad spot there. So any of that green that's spilled over onto the subject there, you can get rid of that. But as you can see, that's caused a lot of problems everywhere else. We get rid of a color, obviously, it's gonna get rid of the color elsewhere as well. So now, to fix these problems, you wanna head up to the top here. And once what you do once you get up the top here is you drop down this bar and you use add lumetri color effect. So this will add another layer of lumetri color on top of the layer you already had. You leave the lumetri color panel and you go over into your effect controls panel. And from here, you can see you have two lumetri colors. The second one will be underneath the first one. You go down to the second one and you use the masking tools. If you don't know what the masking tools are, these create masks that allow things to happen in certain spots of video, but not everywhere on the video. You can customize where on that footage that you want some such and such to happen. So you can make, we can make a circle, we can make a square mask, or we can just draw our own. For this case, we're going to draw our own. We're going to just draw around here. Now, the head may come back in this spot here. That's just something you've got to deal with. You're not going to have the luxuries you would have if you had the proper good lighting with good light facing on the front of you to wash off any of the green. Okay, so now that we've applied our mask around our area, we can then do exactly what we did before. You'll have a, over in the Lumetri color panel, you'll have a fresh start. It won't have any colors selected and you just select that color there and you turn that up all the way, same as before, same process as before, temperature down, tint down, contrast up, saturation up, and that's roughly looks around the same color. And then we can go in within that mask and get all those little bits and pieces. There's nasty bits. I think there's a spot over here. Yep, there we go. And we have that all fixed. If you're willing to take the time, you can then animate the mask's path to go over the top of this bit here and then move out the way when the person comes back into the shot. That would take a lot of time, but it's probably better off seeing if you can key that out, if you can get that to work, which I should be able to. So what we have now, you get rid of that mask, we've fixed that corner there, and we don't have the spill over onto there. So now it's looking pretty good. It's looking like we have a pretty good green screen. Got some shadow effects behind ourselves, but we should be able to make that work. So now we go over here, and if you've tried this at all before, you'll know the tool, or Ultra Key, is the uh, tool used to key out green screens in Premiere Pro. So we add that to our footage, and we get a handy dandy eyedropper tool on that one in the effect controls panel. And we click our average green. You may not notice that there's a difference in all the green, but there is, there's a warmer looking green, a cooler looking green over here. It's, it is different across the board. We want to just go the medium. So already that's looking pretty good. Yes, this is uh, just some footage of me playing Beat Saber. So yeah, we have that keyed out. What we want to do is we want to head over to the so you back into the effect controls panel, you drop down the bar and change it from composite to alpha channel. Now the alpha channel will allow us to see 
all of our little bits of noise that we could not see in the color channel, you can see it a little bit, it's just, it's harder to see. Adjusting in the alpha channel is the way to go. If you've not used this tool already, this is for you. Okay, so then my favorite place to start is to head into the matte cleanup and you just want to turn the contrast up a little bit. For gaming videos, it's perfectly fine to just turn the contrast all the way up and that will fix so many of your problems. But the thing is, with the contrast, you end up with these thick black lines around your subject. For gaming videos, I personally think this is perfectly fine to have. But if you're filmmaking and you're trying to use a green screen that way and put yourself into a scene, it's not going to look okay. It's thick black lines are not going to be immersive. You're not going to look like you are immersed into the environment. For gaming videos, I think it's perfectly fine, but it is up to the user, obviously. We can then soften up our edges just a little bit. I like to stick around 15-ish. That helps get rid of a little bit of your noise and make your edges a little bit softer than they were before. So they're not so harsh and jagged in some spots. Then you can head to your midpoint. You can turn up your midpoint. Do not mess with this one too much. What happens if you mess with this one? You start cutting away at your body and you can start ending up a bit transparent too, depending on the lighting on the body. It's not doing it at the moment, it's just cutting in. But yeah, you wanna just, you wanna, it starts off around 50 and you wanna probably turn that up to 65 at the most. That's still a bit high. So as you can see, we still got the noise around there from those bits that we couldn't key out before, otherwise we would add green to the headset. But we should be able to fix them quite easily with going into matte generation. Matte generation here, we have tolerances we can turn up. That gets rid of that a little bit. And we have shadows, we can turn them down. But as you can see, I've turned that down and that's made any green spillover or dark spots on the headset go down as well. So we wanna turn the shadow up just to the point where it's not disappearing. We've got a bit of noise on the edges still, not to worry, we can still fix it. So the transparency, you don't really wanna to touch the transparency. The transparency, if you mess with that, you will end up transparent yourself. I do not even touch the transparency option anymore. I don't adjust it a single bit because I have had videos where I have not noticed I've become transparent later on through the keying because it wasn't like that when I had when I did it, but at a different point in the video, it will be. So I just don't even do it anymore. I just leave that at the default, which is 45. Highlights, you can turn that all the way down, depending on your lighting, how bright your subject is. If you've got too much light on you, you may key out yourself. You kind of just got to adjust this for your footage but I'm kind of just giving you a tutorial on how you can use these adjustments to make it your uh, key out a little bit cleaner. And if you're still worried about this, these little bits of noise around the edges here, there's one last thing you can do. You can turn up the pedestal. I don't like to touch this very much because as you can see, you mess with this too much and it cuts right in on the body. The controller over here becomes it becomes invisible as well. It cuts right in on your edges. But you can, so it starts at 10 and you can probably just turn that up to about 20, 25. Just minor adjustments on these ones because these ones are very damaging to your footage. All right, now we will head over to the composite channel. And that's looking clean. I'm gonna play that in full quality and we'll see that's looking pretty clean. We're getting a bit of uh, transparency on the headset. You can see through the headset at some points. Now that could happen simply because I messed with the shadows. If I turn the shadows back up, there you go. It turns white again. You gotta kinda just mess around with it. Watch your footage a bit, see what's turning invisible. Some things you'll see on the Alpha channel better, some things, some things you'll see on your footage better. So you just gotta have a bit of a tweak around with it. But you kind of get used to the settings you need. If you're sticking with the same lighting over and over again, you will get used to the same settings over and over. Uh, one last thing, there is this green spill around the edges. So 
for some people that's unsightly. You don't want to see that. There is a simple tool for that. You head, it's in your ultra ultra key still. You head to spill suppression and you head to the spill. You can just turn that all the way up. And that will just desaturate the edges, but only the edges of the clip. If you head to, if you head to, head to something like desaturate, it'll, de it'll desaturate everything. The whole lot will get become desaturated. But if you use a spill tool, it literally just desaturates the edges. It's not so green anymore. It's a little bit green still, but you can change that by changing, adjusting all these other little ones as well. As I said, you just gotta mess around with these things and you'll figure out how to use them. Now, I'm telling you basics of how to use them, but really you're only gonna know by doing it yourself. So yeah, that's looking nice and clean now. That is looking clean. Even with the movements, it still looks quite nice. For such a bad, poorly lit green screen, that has turned out really well. This isn't just for people who do gameplay and so on. This could be used across many aspects of uh, creating videos with green screens, but it is just a handy tip for people with uh, doing it with gaming videos. A lot of people doing gaming videos only have a home setup. They only have limited amount of lighting that they can adjust. They only have small rooms. They don't have room for lights, adding soft boxes and so on. And every other tutorial out there just says everything you got to do, it's in pre-recording and you just need to light your green screen better. Not everyone can do that, hence the reason why I made this tutorial. If you did enjoy the tutorial, let me know. I would like to do more of these. I would like to share my knowledge that I know about editing and all these little tips that don't exactly get shared around so much. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any problems with using this tool. I will try and help you out the best of my ability. Let me know if you have any other problems that you think I might be able to address in another video. If you are new here, make sure you do subscribe. I will be doing these kinds of videos every so often. It's not going to be a very frequent thing, but I, as I said, I'm going to be sharing my knowledge around of what I do know. So, until the next video, peace out, guys.